Hello, everyone. My name is Motoko, and I am a storyteller, originally from Japan and now based in Massachusetts. I have been sharing Asian folk tales and original stories across the United States since 1993. Storytelling is an important way for adults to communicate to children that we love them. During this time of uncertainty and turmoil, stories can be as nourishing as food and rest. With a renewed passion for enriching children's learning experiences, I bring to you my storytelling performance, Folk Tales from Asia, now available face to face and virtually for K through 12 schools and libraries. My stories are age-appropriate, with lots of humor, wisdom, and relevance to the students' contemporary lives. I use traditional songs, movement, and audience participation to engage the listeners. My goal is to enhance their understanding of Asian cultures and to cultivate empathy and respect. Nothing can replicate the human connection at a face-to-face -face event, but online programming does give us a unique opportunity to work together and create a customized program that best serves your specific community by choosing from and combining the following options. Pre-recorded stories from my virtual library, live virtual sessions on the platform of your choice, and face-to-face -face performances that follow all the safety rules. Here are a few sample clips from my virtual story library. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to working with you. Once upon a time, in old Korea, the land of morning brightness, there lived a young boy who loved to listen to stories. He loved all kinds of stories. Many people told him stories, his parents, grandparents, relatives, neighbors, and teachers. Every time the boy heard a new story, he would put it in a small bag his grandmother had given him when he was a baby. It was a special bag made of silk, emerald green with stripes of gold. But as much as he loved listening to stories, he hated telling stories. Maybe he was shy or just a little selfish. Whenever his own little sister asked him for a story, he refused, saying, No, I don't like telling stories. Goro ran as fast as he could. But too soon, he felt the Yamamba crashing close behind him. <laughs> Goro took out another charm. It had this symbol on it. He threw it over the shoulder and shouted, Make a river! Instantly, a huge river appeared right in front of Yamamba. Unfortunately, she knelt down and drank up the whole river. Then started chasing him again. Looking back, Goro saw her dripping water bouncing down the path like a water balloon. He took out his last charm. It had this symbol on it. He threw it over his shoulder and shouted, Make a wall of fire! At once, a tall and deep wall of blazing fire loomed up. Yamamba staggered back a little. But then what did she do? She... A long time ago, in ancient China, there lived 
a beautiful and powerful fairy. Everyone called her the fairy queen mother of the western sky. One day, the fairy queen mother took a vacation and went to visit the eastern sea. She was strolling down on the beach where she found four large eggs, each one about the size of a watermelon. The fairy queen mother gathered all the eggs and held them close to her chest to keep them warm. Soon, the eggs hatched one by one and out popped four baby dragons. The first one was a boy with long green body. So the fairy queen mother named him the Long Dragon. The second one was a girl with a beautiful yellow tail. So she named her the Yellow Dragon. The third one was also a girl with horns the color of pearls. So she was named the Pearl Dragon. The last one was a boy with scales as black as the midnight sky. So Fairy Queen Mother named him the Black Dragon. The Fairy Queen Mother raised the four dragons as her own children. She was a kind mother and always taught them this lesson. Be strong, be brave, and use your strength to help others. Say that with me. Be strong, be brave, and use that strength to help others.